Hello and welcome to ITC TechShare. I'm Tom Grissom. Today I would like to share some tips and tricks about organizing your computer's files, folders, and backups. This is part one of two. So to begin with, I'm signed into a Windows 8.1 computer. And in Windows 8.1, they did put the little start button back in. So if I go down to the lower left hand corner and click on the Windows flag, that will take me back to the start screen. Now I do have the desktop icon, the desktop tile, the largest size possible in Windows 8.1. I'm going to click on that to go back to the desktop because we're going to be pretty much exclusively working on the desktop today, talking about organizing your files. So to begin with, down at the very bottom of the taskbar, we have the Start Screen button, Internet Explorer, and this third icon over from the left looks like a little manila folder. This goes back to the old days of filing cabinets and manila folders. It's called File Explorer. If I click on that and open it up, it brings me to something called This PC. Now what I'm going to share today will also work, for the most part, a little bit of an adaptation for Windows 7, Windows XP, or if you're using a Mac, a Linux, or a Unix system. So to begin with, Windows 8 changed the naming convention. They're now calling it this PC. It used to be called My Computer. If you use Windows 7 or Windows XP, that may be familiar to you. But I've, I've signed on with a, a new account, and by default, whenever you make a new user profile, Windows automatically creates these folders by default. So you'll see desktop, documents, download, music, pictures, and videos. These are all the default folders. Now, 90% of the time, I work in the documents folder. Uh, I try to keep my desktop clean, so I try organizing my files by subfolders underneath documents. So let me just double click and open up documents. So now we're on this PC in the documents folder. This is called the path the complete path. This is how we get to our files. And once again, by default, I've already worked with some programs on here. I've already used OneNote. So OneNote automatically, I did not create this myself. OneNote program did this when we installed it. Um, also Camtasia is what I'm using to record this screencast. It created its own folder called Camtasia Studio. And then some custom Office templates for, if you look, I have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote also pinned to my test taskbar down here at the bottom. Okay, but before we talk about you know naming files, we need to go back and let me go ahead and open up OneNote. And let's just talk about things to consider when naming your files and folders. And I've done some screenshots here. I've completed a couple of screenshots. And if you go to this link, if you're interested in all the big technical details, if you go out to this link, this will take you to Microsoft's site about Windows naming conventions, naming files, paths, and namespaces. Basically, let's keep this simple for now, I want you just to understand that there are some characters you should never use in a file name or folder. You should not be using any special characters like a less than symbol, greater than symbol, colon, question mark, asterisk. Those are no-nos as far as file names go. So stay away from those. So rather than have to memorize a list of you know, what you cannot use, I like to recommend what you can use, and once again, I'm a big, big advocate of keeping things simple. So here is another example. This is from a, a Unix website, but these are acceptable characters for file names. So you can use any alpha character, whether it be uppercase or lowercase, and then any number, zero through nine. So you'll hear me say you can use any alphanumeric character. That's acceptable for a file name. You can use an underscore, a dash, or a period. However, I do not like to use periods because periods were way back when used for file name extensions. So I pretty much reserve myself through upper lowercase alpha numeric character underscore or a dash. That's kind of just to keep it simple. And then if you want to know a little bit more, let me just zoom out if you want to know that URL. If you want to know a little bit more about why you cannot use some of those special characters, um, here is a link in Wikipedia that some of those characters are reserved by the operating system to do certain things. So since I work on multi-platforms, I work on Mac, PC, Linux, and Unix boxes, I try to find the commonality, and like I said, what works very well is alphanumeric, uppercase, lowercase, zero through nine, underscore, or dash. That keeps me cross-platform compatible for the most part. Okay, let me just close out of this. Now to begin with, Everybody's going to have their own system, so you feel free to adapt this for what, what works for you. But this has worked very well for me over the years. So the first thing I do when I get a new computer and sign in is I will go out here and make a new folder. 
and I like calling my folder AY1314 for academic year 1314. Since I'm an educator, I tend to think by academic year, so this would start with you know, fall semester, then spring semester, and finish with summer semester. It also, since it starts with the letter A, whenever you do a sort, it floats to the top. And here's just another tip and trick. If you click on the name, see how that sorts? And if you click on name again, it does in descending order. And if I click on the title, this is my title bar. Let me just expand this just a little bit. And if I click it again, so you can go A through Z or Z through A. Same thing if you click on date modified. Now these are all, with this exception here, this was created yesterday. So if I click on date modified, it sorts it. If I click on date modified again, there you can see. Same thing, this is very helpful. I don't have any file sizes here, but if you're wanting to find what's the largest file in a folder, if you click on size, it will sort it by the file size. So you can either go from the largest to the smallest or the smallest to the largest. So that's a nice little tip for you there. Let's go back here and sort alphanumeric by name. That's what I use most of the time. All right, now just a little bit of structure here. Let me open up my AY1314 folder. Now this is called the path. So I'm on this PC in the documents folder in a subfolder called AY1314. Now I'll typically have dozens of folders in here. So let me just go out here and do new. One of the common things if you're in higher ed is you're always on a lot of committees. So let me create a new folder called Committees. Now that I'm going to double click to open up Committees, notice that it'll change from AY1314. When I double click, it changes to Committees, and here is my full path so I can find out where I'm going. These are kind of like breadcrumbs that you can follow. So now I'm in a Committees subfolder. I'm going to right click, make a new folder, and one of the committees I'm on is called ATAC, Academic Technology Advisory Committee. I'm going to right click in a blank space here, say new folder, ITAC, Information Technology Advisory Committee, right click, new folder, and I'm also on the CEPS underscore tech underscore COMM tech committee. Now I like keeping things short, I don't like spaces, spaces can cause some problems particularly with Unix operating systems, so I always use an underscore whenever there's a, um, where there would be a natural space, it also makes things very readable. I think underscores look a little bit better than dashes myself personally. So now then here I am in the committee folder and if I want to go into the ATAC committee, there's my ATAC folder and once again, this is the path. Now don't get carried away with making subfolders within subfolders within subfolders. I usually don't like to go much more than three to five subfolders deep. There is a file uh, name limit that is up to 256 characters for some older systems and that can get you in trouble um, if your complete path is more than 256 characters and get you in trouble whenever you make backups. So just be aware of that. That's why you see me abbreviating a lot of things and keeping things short. Now if I want to jump back to go just straight back to the documents folder, I can just go over here and click on documents. You'll see my title bar change and you can see this. Now that makes sense for me. Maybe if you're in accounting or administration, you think by fiscal years, maybe you want to come down here and underneath documents, you might want to make a folder called FY14 for fiscal year 14. Let me just double click on that. And let's say that I'm an accountant and I might want to make a subfolder called quarter one. And once again, I don't like to use spaces there, so you'll you won't see me do I could do an underscore just say quarter one or I can come back here say new folder and then I just copied and pasted that there's quarter two right click new folder call this quarter three and one more finish out the year with quarter four and do quarter four now then once again if I click on name here's quarter four, three, two, one. If I click on name again, quarter one, two, three, four. So that's the ascending and descending sort by clicking on the title. All right, now, once again, it makes more sense for me, academic years. Another thing, you know, as teachers, I like to create a folder called courses, C-O-U-R-S-E-S. -E and then underneath courses, I might list the courses that I teach. So let me right click, new folder. And we do things by uh, course number. So EDA5960 underscore 001 for the section number. And then I also like to put like FA2020 
2013, for fall 2013. So anything related to EDA 5960 Section 1 fall 2013 semester would go into this folder. Okay, let me back up. Let's go back to documents again. So everything is a subfolder underneath AY 1314. What this does for me is it makes it very easy to back up things. It also makes it very easy um, to archive things. So I, I have, you know, I can go back years uh, using this system. And the nice thing is once you archive something, you know, the files aren't going to change. So AY1213, if I had that folder out here, I mean, that's, that semester is over and done with, so everything would stay, uh, and I'd only need to back that up to, you know, a permanent archive out there. This one, however, is a working folder. Things are going to change, so you need to make periodic backups. All right, let's just go out to Word real quick and just show you an example here of what I might do. I want to come out here and let's do a syllabus. Let's do a syllabus for uh, EDA 5960-001, and let's say this is fall 2013. So here's the start of my syllabus. Whenever I get everything the way that I want, I can come up here and do File, Save As. Now where do I want to save it? I have, I'm also assigned to a uh, Microsoft account. I don't want to save that. I want to save things locally. Make sure you follow your organization's policies about cloud storage. Um, you don't want to store anything sensitive or confidential out in the cloud. So I'm going to save this locally to my computer. Click on Browse, and by default, the Word's trying to help me out here with the file name, so it just remembered uh, what I typed. But once again, I don't like to have the uh, spaces in there, so I'm going to substitute underscores for that. And then I'm going to say Fall. 2013. All right, and where do I want to put it? Right now, if I hit save, it's going to go into my documents folder. That's not where I want it. This is part of my academic year 1314. This is part of my courses. This is part of my EDA 5960001 fall 2013 folder. Now, then, if I save it, I'm going to save it to the correct place, and I can easily find it. It's organized um, by my own system. You know, you can use whatever system you want, but again, uh, this works for me. Now, this sometimes happens. You notice there that I like click and, and, and uh, I drag the mouse a little bit, so it's trying, wanting me to rename. That happens to you. You can just double click on the folder, and that will take you uh, directly there. Another course, let me just go back under here while I'm at courses. Another course that I've taught in the past is edu 2022 underscore 001, and let's make this fall 2013. So you get the idea. It makes it very easy that you can drill down uh, to the different things that, that you want to, uh, to go with. All right, so that's just a quick, uh, quick little session, tips and tricks about using this. So if I go back to this PC, I have a folder called Documents. I created a subfolder called AY1314. Anything related to this academic year, I want to make sure I store inside of this folder. And then, like I said, I would have dozens of different folders here, but this is a star here to give you an idea uh, how to use that. So until next time, this is Tom Grissom, and be sure to stay tuned. Part two is coming up, and I'll talk about different tips and tricks on that. Stuff.